Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to Frontier Pilot Simulator. The title has been around for a little while now and in that time it has had a decent number of updates. And in fact you can read more about those updates as well as purchase the game itself through the link in the video description. Now I have been aware of the game for quite some time, however I haven't really had the chance to have a close look at it yet. Then I was contacted by the developers asking me to take a look, so this is a sponsored video, however all views in here are entirely my own. What you get in this game then is, as the title suggests, a game that contains a flight sim elements. In its simplest form, it's about hauling cargo from A to B. From that perspective, it could perhaps be considered a trucker game, and it's certainly going to be an appeal here for people who enjoy short to medium cargo transportation. But the game at its core is a fair bit more than that, and we'll discuss those things throughout this video. Now I've made a very short trip here from the uh, little base down the hill there up to the one on the top and the reason for that is because we've just moved the cargo container that I picked up down there up to uh, this top location. It's the start of a trade run then and this is the very early parts of the game where it essentially walks you through those parts. So ideally we want to settle these uh, B2 rations for the highest price possible. We can use the world map to find those prices and we'll have a look at that further into the video. But for now we just need to go over to this marked base over in the distance. Currently it's indicated yellow. Now the starter ship here uses VTOL. In fact I believe all the ships in the game use VTOL. So that's vertical takeoff and landing. And I've found that the ships really do take some skill and practice to actually use. And that's where the flight sim element of the game actually comes in. When we land down here on these landing pads we need to get right into the center of them. Uh, essentially you'll see the outline turn yellow. It will turn green when we stop our ship over the target. We can then sell whatever goods we've got uh, located in our cargo hold. Now whilst at the bases we can do a number of things here and these include refueling, repairing, collecting and selling cargo as well as picking up passengers and that's without mentioning that we can also outfit our ships with new modules or even purchase entirely new ships. Now here on the world map we want to look at something else. We want to see what else other activities we can get involved in. Uh, there's a passenger mission there which I may just come back to. Other than that we can pick up some uh, different commodities from the various locations. But for now let's go collect that passenger. Now as you can see here we also have different views available to us as we can cycle the camera around the ship. This one here is the inside view. We're actually inside the cockpit here. It actually gives a nice sense of scale as well as a nice sensation of speed. Now passengers are not picked up on the regular landing pad, instead you go to a different marked area. And you can deploy your cargo ramp at which point the passenger will board your ship. They then confirm where they want to go and give you an allotted time to actually get there. And in this case it's just up to the northeast of the island, not too far away. But we only have one minute to do it in. Uh, very difficult unless you're going to really throw the ship around and as you get more practice you will be able to do that. But ideally for passengers it's best to try and deliver them in their requested time but it's not always possible and even if you don't manage that they will still pay you at least as long as you don't take too long. Now I mentioned right at the start of the video that the game has received a number of updates. In fact there's one that just happened right now and it has brought a few updated visuals amongst other things into it. Much of the updates and many of the changes come from community feedback. The developers are very much keen on listening to what players have to say about the game and they do respond accordingly. Now one of the things I have liked about the game so far is the way the ships handled. There is a degree of realism here especially in relation to physics how the, uh, the gravities and other environmental factors including weather pull down on the ship not to mention how the ships handle differently when they've got various types of cargo on board. Environmental factors then are an issue right here. We're going to fly into a geezer just so you can see what happens. And as you can tell, it messes the ship up pretty badly. The other indicators you can see on the screen right now, they come from pressing the V key by default on the keyboard. And this shows wind factors. And these are very important indicators because they give you a very good heads up as to what's going on with the weather, which does have a dramatic impact upon your ship. I'm also just going to fly into this volcano just for the hell of it, just so you can see what actually happens and that the reason you might have to avoid these types of things. Right now the volcano probably seems easily avoidable, but further into the game we're on the larger area maps and you've got other uh, weather factors and environmental factors and visibility is very low, it's all too easy to accidentally fly into either a geezer 
or a volcano, or indeed even fly straight into the sides of a mountain. In fact, it's even entirely possible to get very much lost out there. Now, when you do die, you find yourself in an injection capsule or an escape pod, and it will take you straight back to a base where your ship will be replaced under an insurance policy. You will have to pay a fraction of the cost towards that replacement, and in fact, if you crash too often, you will find yourself with a negative credit balance, and that can be quite difficult to actually get outside of. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point that we don't have any control over the escape capsule here. This is all entirely automated, so you simply sit back, relax, and wait for it to deliver you back to the bases. And we're arriving right here now uh, on a little platform before we find ourselves in a replacement ship, which is an exact clone of a previous one. So as we're in the hangar, let's have a bit of a look at what goes on in here. Uh, you can do repairs here, you can refuel, you can also purchase completely new modules for your currently equipped ship. And you can see that in the form of engines here, increased battery capacity or uh, fuel size we could say. Uh, there's also engine changes, we can change the wings and even the structural integrity of the ship itself. I'm just going to quickly replace the engines and let's go for some slightly better ones. And you can see the little robotic arms doing their thing here. Now each module will give us an advantage or a benefit. In this particular case, it will give us extra power and additional lift. In fact, module upgrades are one thing you're going to need to do if you want to get the full potential out of any of your ships. Talking of which, you can also purchase other ships. Now we can't see them directly here within the hangar, we don't get a preview. We can see the ships that are available over to the side. And there's three available right here, including the Scarab, the Ox, and the pretty expensive Balena. So I think that pretty much covers the basics of the game. Let's move further in and get a feel for the gameplay itself. Right then, so this is the ship I have right now. We've got, what have we got? 114,000 credits. So, we're going to see what we can actually pick up to earn some more here. And to do that, we can just drop in to the uh, map here, to the world map. And I'm down here at Hide Mine. I'm probably going to do the same trip I've done previously, which is to sell some water we can see over on the necessary item side the buying water or soul water for 79,000 credits per load so we just need to find somewhere that's selling them we can also see the items that the hard mine are actually selling so serium plays 2000 to, to uh, 2500 millimeter lenses deep explorer scanner and so on Items in green, these are com uh, ship components, items that we can actually buy for our ship. And the yellow item, of course, is a passenger. So there's a passenger here I could pick up if I wanted to, and we could take them somewhere. I'm not actually going to do that. We do have some other locations here that we can uh, check out. So we can see over at North 1, they're buying water for 55,000 credits. At Terbium for 25,000 credits. What else have we got? So this is essentially how you can go about doing trading within the game and it's just a case of scrolling around and having a look at what sort of locations you might want to visit quite a few locations of course big crater pwbk you get, you get the idea down here i think is the highest price you can actually get for water so it's the greatest distance from the pickup location i happen to know where you can actually purchase water from and you can purchase it very very cheap let's have a look right up this end across the sea over here on the island that we actually started out on, Port Estelle. Selling water for a thousand credits. I think we're about to get there in a single trip. 125,000 meters. There we go. We've got a fairly large ship here now with improved engines and improved uh, fuel tank. We should be able to make that in a single journey. Let's go find out. So as you can see straight away, this ship is somewhat heavier than the other one. It takes a little bit of effort to actually even get it off the ground. But, you know, that's okay. We're heading on the compass over there to Port Estelle, and hopefully we're not going to get any bad weather. Sometimes that does come in and causes us some problems. It's a good idea to also look at the compass and see what direction your target actually is, just in case the radar stops actually working. So we're going uh, west by north or north by west, however you want to phrase that. Get a, keep a bit of an idea, or remember the kind of a location on the compass there, just so you can actually refer to that if the uh, radar goes down. Right, so we can change the wings on this, and go into a different flight mode. This is basically uh, an airplane mode. Oh dear, we're going to hit the mountain, are we? 
Oh, boom. So that's how to not do it. When you do blow up, you end up in an escape capsule here. You'll go back to some, probably either your last location or the closest location. In this case, they're both the same. Uh, you'll get an insurance payout. Luckily, they do cover the cost of the ship, but it will be fairly expensive relative to the cost of the ship that you actually owned. So, uh, for example, in the starter ship, I think it's just something like a thousand credits that you've got to pay for insurance. In uh, this ship, it's going to be a fair bit more. Let's see. Could tell us here. But 2,850 uh, credits for the wants on that. You know, that's fine. Ship's an exact same replacement. Haven't really lost too much there, aside from those credits. The issue would be is if I had cargo in my cargo hold, because I would have lost that there as well. Now, the cargo wouldn't have been damaged. We would have dropped that on the mountainside there. But depending on the value of that cargo, we would then have had to gone back to collect it. We could perhaps ignore it if we really wanted to, or if we could afford to do so. But ideally, we'd want to collect it again. And depending on where that location actually was, it might be quite hard to land there to pick it up. On the side of a mountain, it probably wouldn't be all that easy to get. The cargo would roll down the side of the mountain, but it could be a little bit difficult. Of course, if that had been in the sea, then we'd almost be out of luck. Recovering it from the sea would be difficult to, let's say, impossible. But we did have any cargo, so that isn't too bad. But the idea here, before you change the wings, is to make sure you've got enough height and enough velocity before you actually change the flight mode. You can change flight mode on a gamepad. I'm using an Xbox One gamepad here. And you can change that by using the X button or the blue button. We can also use the wind key here. This is I use this it's on the keyboard, the V key. And this actually tells me what direction the wind is heading in. Not too strong at the moment, but it is blowing us off to the right slightly. But the wind, I guess, is heading in an easterly direction. We've got to keep an eye on our fuel here. I've already burned nearly a thousand units of fuel. Once we're up high enough, I think that should do. We can change the wing, change the flight mode, and fly like a regular plane. But over onto the right of the HUD, you can see our lift. We do get wing lift in this mode. And we can see our speed on the left. So in meters per second, we're at 200 meters per second at the moment. Let's get up to about 350 and then I'll switch the engines off for just a moment or release the, uh, the accelerator. Also keep an eye on weather warnings. We want to keep below two kilometers here because there's a high level of ski up there which would affect our flight. Right, we're going to try saving our fuel here. We're down to 10,000 units. Obviously, if we keep our engine uh, going, we would be in a little bit of trouble. Because we would run out of fuel very quickly. Now, as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes the uh, HUD stops working or the radar stops working. You can see it down at the bottom. It's saying protective circuit overload. And that's because I've got a little bit too high or I've exceeded the uh, speed of, of the ship. And things like that, or sometimes just environmental factors, can actually cause problems. It says time to restore, 30 seconds. If we actually come back within reasonable parameters again, we'll find that that counter actually goes back down. And when it does, you'll start uh, resetting. There it goes. 27, 26, 25. When that resets, we'll actually be back on the line with our radar. Which means that we're about to see what direction we're going in. But it's fine because we did keep an eye on the... Uh, compass there, so we know roughly what direction we need to fly in. I want to try and keep below a thousand meters or so here. But the little grey bar on the right also shows us our lift. Try and keep the lift fairly low, and there you can see we're coming into that yellow zone. We're going to get a short circuit again. Bang! Got a short circuit overload again. That's fine. We can actually deal with that at the moment. We can handle that. Nothing too serious, but it can be serious. Really depending on your uh, location and your environmental factors. Off to the right, we can see a uh, bit like an oil rig, really. A little base out in the ocean. Can land at those locations. Also, keep an eye on the right to uh, uh, keep an eye on your drop. 
We're dropping down here now quite rapidly. We don't want to end up in the sea. But let's pick up speed again. The other way of doing this is, of course, I could just keep the trigger not fully depressed, just slightly depressed. We could keep a little bit of velocity going. Uh, it does burn more fuel than I would like, but it would also keep our speed fairly consistent. And if we keep our speed consistent, our uh, wing lift would stay consistent. So it kind of depends on how you actually want to fly the ship. You can just accelerate up to full speed and then glide, or you can just keep a consistent uh, speed, like I'm um, here, 182 meters per second. But it's not really my preference. I really prefer to just build up a massive load of speed here and then glide for a little while and uh, save fuel. Getting a bit of turbulence here. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but we're bouncing around quite a bit. That's something that you do have to watch out for. Uh, in this case, it's not too much of a problem, but if we've got some commodities in the uh, cargo hold, especially if they're fragile, then it will be a problem for us. Oh, the wind is blowing us a little bit off course here. Well, not the wind, I'm actually trying to counteract the wind and turning too much towards the west. Right, now we'll actually need to think about blowing down here. So we can actually put on the air brakes here using the reverse thrust. Come down to about 150 meters a second. Maintain that for a little bit. You can see we've got a little bit of drop going on here now. We're coming down to 700 meters. We don't want that drop to be uh, too fast. So I'm going to just pull back on the stick, use a bit of wing lift. And I think about now is a good time to switch to VTOL mode. Go. But you do need to pull back a little bit here to slow down. There's a landing pad. And very briefly here, I'd like to point out the other throttle mode. Here you can see my throttle is no longer declining or inclining. What's happening is that it's actually locked. And by default, you can use the Y key on the Xbox pad to do this. You simply just set where you want the throttle to be and it will lock in that location. So give some positive lift here and you will keep lifting up at whatever rate that you actually set it to. Likewise, you can set a negative thrust. Uh, we don't really want to do that too fast, otherwise we'll drop like a brick and crash into the ground. But I think you get the point there. Uh, very quick, very easy to switch between the two different throttle modes. Just a single key depress and it makes a huge amount of difference to how you fly the ship. So let's go back to the other mode, the one I was using previously. So normally I'd come in a lot faster towards the landing pad here and a lot more accurately, but here I just really want to show you an example of how to use the different thrusts. But yes, this is a slightly heavier ship. You do want to be careful with how you take your approach. If you get too low, you can clip on the top of the uh, scenery here or on top of the buildings, and this will either damage your engines or cause you to flip the vehicle, both of which you actually want to avoid. But at the moment, we don't have any cargo, so the ship is that much lighter, and this, generally speaking, isn't too difficult. Get a nice gentle landing down over here on the airplane pad, and that's where we want to get in place. And go, oh, we're down. You can see our steering wheels are down to 78% on damage. You do take damage slowly over time on your journeys. Everything else is not too bad. We've certainly got enough to get us back anyway. Uh, you would need to repair yourself at a cargo hangar. Or a, not a cargo hangar, but a hangar bay. You can get yourself repaired at these places, a repair station. There isn't one right here, unfortunately. Now that's green. Now that's green. The uh, pink. There we go. Bring up the uh, commodity screen. We're going to buy our 6.2 tons of water. 1,000 credits. Go, we'll see this get loaded into the back of our ship right now. So, depending on your ship, you might have room for additional cargo, so you could do more than one run at a time. Alternatively, you might just want to do be a single run, just like this. Let's load it up. Right, now let's get out of there. We go back to the map. We know where we want to settle this game will actually give you some indicators here of places that you can sell it. If we wanted to, we could sell it to Reglor Transit for 30,000 credits. Sell it to North 1 for 55,000 credits. But preferably, I'd prefer to go back to Hardmine here. Sell it there. But, we've got enough fuel. That's always one thing you need to keep in mind. You don't want to do the journey with 
an empty fuel tank, but another thing I have to keep in mind here is that if I fill right up on fuel here, if I recharge the battery all the way up, what will happen is that my ship will be too heavy to actually take off because the water here actually adds a significant weight to my ship. I'm going to go about there, I think much more than that, and my ship is going to be too heavy to actually fly because obviously I've got the water in there as well right now. So, with the extra weight, we might not be able to make it 125,000 kilometers. So we're going to go to Ranglor Transit first, then we will refuel, and then we'll head back to Hardmine. Get going. And you can see here how much heavier the ship actually is now, this slower uh, liftoff that we've actually got. The other advantage here is that we have got the wind behind us, more or less, on our trip back. But that will help with fuel conservation. Now, one thing we do have to keep in mind is that this time the ship is going to drop much, much faster if I actually let it drop. Earlier on, when we landed at the other port, back behind us now, uh, if I let my finger off the accelerator, we didn't drop too fast, as long as I was quick to start accelerating it again. But here, the extra weight will cause us to drop pretty rapidly. So that's something that we do need to watch. We do not want to crash into the side of that cliff there. Come on, come on, let's get some lift here. And that's simply because I tried to decelerate as well by uh, pointing the ship upwards. Giving me some reverse thrust to try and slow my forward momentum down. I need to be careful simply because of the weight of the vehicle here. Any fast movements... Any rapid movements is a bit of a problem. Whoa, and there we go. A relatively slow, gentle landing in here. Everything done in its own time. Gently does it. And if you're a super skilled pilot, if you like taking the risks, you can of course throw the vehicle around and challenge yourself to land as fast as possible without actually damaging yourself too much. And we're down. Again, we need to align the vehicle here. The little grid. Uh, not because we want to unload the cargo, because we don't. We're taking this further afield. But we do need some fuel. And while we're at it, we're going to get some repairs as well. In fact, I could actually refuel inside the hangar in front of us if I wanted to. Since we're here, I'm going to do it here. A recharge, it's 2,000 credits. Uh, again, I don't want to go too high here. Go, because otherwise we won't be able to take off. Let's drive into the hangar here and repair up, because travelling does do its wear and tear on the vehicle. This time our steering wheels are down to 63% and our engine is at 78%. Nearly there, so you can actually drive around these bases all along these roads, so wherever you want. And sometimes you may see some cargo on the side, and that's where you'll want to pick it up. Other times there may be a passenger there. But we're going to get repaired right now. No problem. Don't want to recharge. We want service and repair. This is all fully animated. We can see the little robot gadget arms doing their thing. And down the left hand side there you can see the hull has been repaired. The engine's now being repaired. The wings are now being repaired and so on, until our vehicle is back how we actually want it to be. Hey, there we go. Then we'll be back to the map. The map we go, uh, we select Hardmine as our destination. That's Hardmine. Hardmine, right. Still going to be a fair old distance. Go 70,000 kilometers. Let's go. So something we can see here is how environmental factors actually cause issues with with things. Um, the clouds are low here, so they would be affecting visibility if we were flying any further. Fortunately, Hardmine is right here, but we will have to fly through some of these clouds, and they could actually cause us to hit mountains if we weren't a bit more careful. 
Hotmind is right below us though, so we need to slow down. So what you'll find as your plan, Frontier Pilot, is that the different towns, the different environments, or the different uh, stations and outposts are all located in dramatically different areas. Hardmind, for example, is surrounded by these very, very high mountain peaks. That means you need to get over them or just navigate in from the side. It does require some pretty careful navigation, especially if you've got high winds or very, very low visibility. The landing pad is over there in front of us, but I just want to slowly position myself so you can get a bit of a view of this outpost from a distance. And again, you do have to watch the structures as well because you don't want to crash into them. There's also a passenger there, down on the right. We could travel over that way and pick them up if we so wanted. And indeed, some of these towns, some of these outposts, are situated right next to environmental factors, right next to thermal vents and things like that. So you do have to be extraordinarily careful if you don't want to uh, damage your ship or cause some serious problems. So you can see yet again that the water is causing a bit of an issue here for my ship. It's making the navigation a little bit difficult because if I release the throttle, I drop quite rapidly. Now also another thing I want to point out is the water indicator down there on the bottom right. You can see there's a little bar that keeps lifting up and moving down. That indicator represents how much I'm actually throwing around the cargo with my manoeuvring. Now in the case of water it doesn't really matter, but with fragile cargo you'll find that this uh, big dotted bar actually has some limiters on it. And if the movable part of the bar, the bit you can see just shifting to the right and left actually goes into the limited area you will start causing the damage to the cargo and effectively you will then have to cover the costs of the cargo or the damage and you will start losing profit so here we are then we can settle at this water and we're good to go i think so there we go a nice chunk of profit there so if you enjoy hauling cargo and you like flying around and you like these simulation areas of uh, flight games then there's definitely something here for you with frontier pilot do be sure to check out the game through the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.